everyone, Maury Cruz Dunbar here with Painted Studio. Welcome back. It's been a couple days since I've done a live. It has been chaotically busy here, so thank you for your patience with me. We've got some fun projects we're going to work on today, so just give me a second to set my cameras up so that I can see things, manage the zoom and crop on here so I can get you seeing what needs to be seen instead of, you know, like the top of my head. And then also let me check and make sure, yep, I'm live on my page because I went live on my personal page last week and messed that up. So, okay, what we're working with today, well, first we're gonna do a little unboxing. I do have some new products. Let me grab the box, it's right over here. It's heavy, I can't lift it literally have to kick it over here because it's also we're restocking on fo uh, on texture medium or to build texture medium and stuff but we have some new foils in that will be on our website uh, as soon as I'm done Oh, we're coming back. Sorry, we froze, so I want to make sure we come back live on our page, too. Yep, we're back. Okay. I don't know what happened. I don't know why we froze. Things happen sometimes, and I have no understanding of it whatsoever. That is my invoice. So let's pull out what we've got here. Okay. Ah, we have. <laughs> We have the new uh, Wild Thang uh, foil from Artsyville, or Artistic Painting Studio, not Artsyville. Now, this is, if you followed Jennifer Ferguson at all, they had a naming contest. We've got this in. It took a, we were one of the, or one of the first to get it into our shop because it took a little while. They had to do some special stuff on it, but. Okay, how cool is this? This is the Wild Thing uh, new foil. We just brought that in. This will, all of these will be on the website tonight. I have to, uh, obviously, now that I've got them out of the box, I have to put them on the website. Now this you were familiar with, this is our new, uh, sorry. This is matte gold. This is our matte gold. We've had this on our website forever, so this is not something new. I'm just restocking there. Let's see what else we've got. Oh, we've got the gold hexagon foil. I'm oh, sorry, the pink hexagon foil. This is very cool stuff. Okay, let's pull that out. So if you haven't seen the pink hexagon yet, Off of there. Look at how beautiful that is. You can see that gorgeous hexagon pattern in there. 3D, very cool. And then I also brought in one that I had been thinking about but couldn't get a good picture of it um, looking at it. And so now, uh, now that I brought it in to try it. This is Bubbles in Black. Now, you've probably seen the bubbles in other colors, but the bubbles in black didn't photograph very well, so I couldn't get a good read on it. But you can see it's kind of 3D, kind of holographic. Very cool. It's got kind of an iridescent blue, a little bit of rainbow flash to it on a black background, but look how cool that is. I really, really like that. So it was really nice to, to see all of these different patterns that came in. Hey, Maddie. Yeah, Maddie, we froze. I don't know what happened. Hi, Heather. Nice to see you here. Okay, so these are the new ones. And if you are following our page, you will see <laughs> that I posted a video today. There are four new snakeskin foils on order 
coming in. One's sort of a goldish, one's a silvery black and white kind of looking one. One is an iridescent pink and yellow and greenish one. One is an iridescent blue with green and yellows and all kinds of colors. And it's very cool. So go back, check the video out. Um, you'll notice it's Artistic Painting Studios video. They are our suppliers for these foils. So definitely check it out. They're already on order. We should have them in, ooh, I hope, within a week. So those are coming in soon. Other big announcement is, yay, we finally took a while to get it all organized, but we have our Whitson's products coming in. I know, because I just paid the import taxes on them today. So they should be in, they said, um, May 31st, so that's next week. Uh, I, I don't know which day, I think that's Tuesday, which is perfect, so we will have them in in a week. We're working on the pricing now, so everything will be pre-priced on the website. If you want to order anything in advance, just know that once we get it in and enter the, everything online, we'll get it shipped out to you. We just don't have it in hand, but it's the Whitson's Universal Lacquer for Leaf, which is one of the things we'll be working with today, and Whitson's Superior Adhesion Primer, which if you know anything about priming furniture and what's available on the market right now, there have been a lot of issues getting a high bonding primer. My favorite go-to was Primetch. Primetch is no longer made. It's, it's gone. Um, I've never found anything that bonds to hard to bond surfaces that is waterborne, as, that is as good. This is a waterborne alkyd. meets California standards, so it can be shipped anywhere in the country. Um, and you've seen me test it. You saw, probably saw me testing it back in March when I did those tiles that we turned into coasters, this stuff grabs. It's bulletproof. It's amazing. Um, people who are able to get it in the UK and in Europe have seen some of our postings about bringing it in. And they're so excited for us to have it here because they have trusted it for quite a while in Europe. And we are the uh, US distributor for the product. So it's really exciting. We are finally getting a product and a primer again that I can tell you is one of the best things I've ever put my brush in. So we're talking about all of that today. The next thing we're going to do is work on our corbels. Now last week, let me see if you can see them from my camera. Um, last week, I showed you how we primed these with uh, Faux FX Old World Finishing Paint Tint Base. Let me adjust the camera here so we're pulling out a little bit again. And open up. Gosh, it takes forever for this to work. Okay, so what we did, we primed this with Faux FX Old World Finishing Paint Tint Base, very watered down to seal the grain. Um, today I've come in, I have, uh, and yesterday, and took a couple days just working on a bit and pieces while I'm working on other projects. We applied Faux FX Gravel Gray Set Coat here on the bracket part, and then we applied Faux FX Woody Yellow Set Coat to the sculptural part here in the middle. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to use a silver leaf here and I like to have a gray background under silver, and we're going to put golds here, and I like to have a goldy, ochre kind of color for under the golds. Now, that's very traditional kind of coloring for under gold leaf. Um, this is not the same as picture. What we're going to be doing today is not the same as um, old-fashioned water gilding on picture frames where they've built up rabbit skin gesso, where they've built up a bowl and where they're using a water and gelatin mixture to lay the gold on and they're burnishing with a marble burnisher. That's not what we're doing. We are using our Roberson's water-based acrylic size. We just brought that in. I have laid it out on a completely gilded, put or completely sized this piece on the sculptural part, not on the gray. Uh, and I'm going to show, lay out the, the product here on this side of this one. I've already put these size on this side, and it lays out really nicely. 
We have not had any issues with bubbling or any of the stuff that we can often see with other water-based sizes that I've dealt with. It lays down really nice and smooth. Um, and it comes to a tack that is very, very, very close to oil adhesive. Um, but because this is water-based, it means we can seal this up much, much faster. When you use um, a water-based, I'm sorry, when you use an oil-based size, you have to let things cure for quite a while before you want to seal it up. This one we can do very quickly. We'll, we can pro if I finish gilding it tonight, we can seal it tomorrow. If I finish gilding it tomorrow, we can seal it up the next day um, because there is a, a cleaning step that goes in between. All right, so let's first apply. Let's get down here so you can see what's going on. And I'm going to come in here onto the corbel. Um, we're going to first apply the size on the other side here. I'm going to take a few minutes and do that. Now you'll see I work fairly quickly, but that's because I'm used to doing this. If you're not used to doing this, take your time. You have time to work. And I, as you notice, I poured very little product in here. This does not take a lot. It's a thin size, so it goes on. And if you don't know what I mean by size, size is another word for glue. Um, but we don't use glue because this is si the size stays open. Glue is kind of misleading and people then get confused and think they can use any kind of glue. This does not work for foils. The adhesive is not strong enough. This is very specifically designed for gold and metal leaves. Um, the adhesive is thinner. The tack is lower. This levels. Um, you get a beautiful layout with this. We'll have a little texture under here because um, the wood itself has a little texture but I have applied set coat on here and it dried down really nice and tight. And you can do, you know, you could use um, some of our Roberson's metallic paints and then gild over that, that would work too. Get gold on gold on gold, but I wanted to do this this way so you all could see what was going on. A little higher contrast shows a little more. Now these are gonna go in my house. I've gone back and forth in my head like a dozen times what I was gonna use whether I was going to use real gold, whether I was going to use uh, composition gold, whether I was going to use variegated leaf. No, I'm decided to use, I have a pink variegated leaf that I have not used on anything. I have tested our Whitson's um, top coat over it, the, the leaf lacquer, the universal lacquer that we're bringing in, and it very minimally altered the pink. And that's a huge deal because anything that's pink or red is a copper reacting in the metal. And that is truly um, the most reactive metal. So it's the one that's hardest to preserve when you're doing stuff. Even just using it over copper, and I have done it, copper is really super reactive. And so you have to be careful when you're sealing it because stuff that you can seal it with can cause it to react. And that's one of the, the, the amazing things about the Whitson's Universal Lacquer that I'm so pleased with is that it doesn't react with copper. Um, variegated leaf is a tough one because it's treated with chemicals and heat to get the patterns and the colors and so any other chemical put over it can often disturb the coloring. It can disturb um, the pattern. It can disturb the shine. Well, I haven't had that happen once with Whitson's and I have been working with it for, I don't know, four or five months now. Really, really pleased with it. Really, really pleased. And we have sent this out. Um, you've probably seen the post to our sample of our samples going out. I've sent this to a good 60 guilders plus, 60 plus guilders who 
use gold leaf all the time. Um, plus decorative artists who do big composition gilding jobs and top coating it without having an odor that drives people out of the building has also been an issue. And that's also one of the nice things about using a really good water-based size. Now, you know I love my oil-based size. You've seen me use it many times, but this water-based size gets me as close to an oil-based gilt size as I can possibly get. I, that's, it's been very, very impressive to me. Now, as you can see, I'm working it. I'm not letting it puddle. I'm not letting it pool. You don't want dribbles. Um, I'm making sure that there's no funny spots in between things. If it's too built up somewhere, I kind of come in, I work it out a little bit because that will be the spot that gives you the least effective adhesion to your gold. It'll look the dullest. One of the things to get a good application of gold leaf on anything is you want your size to be applied thinly, not thickly. That's part of the reason um, Artsyville foil adhesive, as amazing as it is for foils, is not a good choice for, for gilding. It's too thick. It's too textury. It's too um, soft. And so you don't get what the, the look out of it that you want. And as you can see, I'm going back over areas. I'm checking for puddles, checking for any pooling. And as soon as I finish this side too, I'm going to flip it, turn it around. First, I'll turn it around to make sure I haven't missed sides that I know I'm missing by only looking at it in this direction. And then I'm going to turn it over to make sure I don't have any dribbles. And if I have dribbles, uh, I need to correct them. So as you can see with this texture on the breast, I'm kind of scrubbing it in to get it into all the little details. And that can, you have to be careful because that can make it look a little foamy. So you got to come back in and smooth it out. You know, quality results are all about paying attention to detail. And I know this is not something, you know, this is, this is not an everybody thing. Uh, oh, good. You saw that. Hi, Rebecca. Nice to see you. And Jeanette, thanks for popping in. Yeah, you like, you saw the snake skins, Maddie. They are cool, aren't they? Those new foils are amazing looking. So again, you want your adhesive, your size, your glue, whatever it is you're going to call it, you want it thin. You don't want it thick. Thicking, thick areas lead to softer, first of all, it takes longer for the glue to set, for the adhesive to set up. But it also, um, it leads to a softer spot on it, which you don't want. You don't want soft spots of adhesive. You want it to kind of suck right down to the hard surface that you're sizing. And so you get a better result. And then I gotta go in the bird's eyes. Now the funny thing, I know this will happen because this is incredibly detailed. I will have missed spots no matter how hard I've worked on this. I will have missed spots. The nice thing with working with variegated leaf in the way that we're going to um, is that the missing of the spots doesn't really matter because I can I will be patching it back in. Um, and I'm going to show you a technique that I learned to go over highly textured surfaces like this. I, I'm sure you've seen it if you've watched me in the past. Uh, when I was gilding a, a couple of Buddhas, you saw the technique is you lay one piece of gold on top of another, or one piece of metal leaf on top of another, and then you use a brush to, a, a special brush to kind of pounce it down in there so you're filling in gaps as you're going along. But it, it takes a while. 
takes it takes patience it takes some work this is stuff i love um i love as you've all heard me say fiddly stuff i love fiddly stuff and it's literally what i've been doing all day today when i wasn't doing paperwork uh, i'm getting that table ready to go to its client my client so um, we're doing the final details there, and I've got to order the, the hardware for it tonight. And... But don't worry, I will show you the uh, sewing table when it's done. It's just more of the little fiddly stuff you've seen me doing on it in the past, so um, I don't video me doing the same thing over and over again. Later this week, once I've done my corbels, we're going to play with epoxy and pigment and um, silicone oils. Uh, I saw some very cool techniques. I'm going to try to replicate them. I want to see how they work. We're going to find out. That's going to need I do work that in a little bit. See, I just keep going back. If I see anything pooled, I clean it up. All right, let me turn this around. Let me go this side because there are spots that clearly I can't see from both directions. I keep trying. I keep trying to learn to put my eyeballs on a swivel, but that doesn't seem to work very well for me. literally pulling off size from one spot to go into others to check and make sure I've got it applied. That way I don't over apply foil if, uh, the, the gold leaf size. And I'm going to say foil size back and forth. I just know anytime I'm saying foil size on here, unless I am specifically talking about foil, I mean gold size because of the how much we use both pro I use both products. Okay, I think I'm gonna get under the bird's neck here. I think I get this bird's wing. all of it. I'm sure I will have missed a spot or two. That's the other nice thing with doing it this way. I can easily get in, correct a spot, touch it up, put more size on, and fix it. Whereas if I was working with oil, um, I'd have much longer setup times, and I'd also have to worry about making sure it was really completely leveled with the other stuff. So here we go. Let me check on this side to make sure there's no little drips. There really aren't. I'm just kind of bringing my brush in there to grab anything that might want to have an attitude. There we go. Let's put that over to the side. And this sets up in 15 to 20 minutes for use. So now we are ready to go. Uh, I'm going to start on the front here. Turn this so that you can see the sculptural side better. Sorry, I got stiff neck, y'all. So I'm working with this foil, and the, one of the things I like working with, I mean, not foil, uh, leaf. Um, composition leaf is a little thicker than gold leaf, so I can kind of um, handle it with my fingers as opposed to having to get out a tip and all that sort of stuff. So this is the leaf and as you can see it's kind of got a cool sunburst pattern and we're just going to lay it right down on here we're going to start tapping it down with our mop or 
Mark Skewing's brush, sorry. And then we'll start getting it into place. As you can see, it's breaking wherever I lay it. I fully, fully, fully expected that, but look how cool that coloration is. And if I run out of this, my goal is to get most of this covered with this in a couple pieces because I need to do the other one as well and I have to do the back of this. Um, then I'm gonna fill in the broken parts with regular composition gold. Because okay. I only have one pack of this and it's not completely full. see it's tamping down, grabbing on here really nicely. So I'm kind of trying to do each side with four pieces maximum. Because I just don't have that much of this. In there. And then I'm going to take a little piece down here and then take another little piece over here. And again, like I said, composition leaf is a much, much, much heavier leaf. And that's why I can do things like pick it up and tear it like that. You cannot do that with um, regular gold. It's too thin. It's too delicate. You will get a poor result. Let's get a little in there. Let's see. Oh, thank you, Jill. I think that's a pretty cool color too. And we're going to do silver up here around, um, on where the, I mean, where that's gray is going to be done in silver. I haven't decided if I'm going to do it in aluminum or real silver yet. So right now what I'm just doing is making sure I'm not wasting any of this really cool leaf, getting it all tamped down. If there's a little bit of a loose skewing, I'm gonna pull it and stick it somewhere where there isn't any of that pink and green and yellow color. I mean, it's very Easter eggy, but it's so cool. My husband's going to be like, really, we're putting up pink in the living room? Yes, dear, we are. Hate to break it to you. Yes, we are. This is very cool stuff. Yeah, we're back. Sorry about that. When we lose picture like that, um, we have huge storms coming through the area right now. Let me um, adjust my picture because I knocked my phone when we were doing this. And so you lost that. Here we are. So we have, we have tornado warnings and stuff going on. So, you know, be patient. If we go black for a second, we might be back if we're gone for more than a minute. We're not coming back and I'll restart the video. Um, I, this one, this one's not user error. This one is 100% weather. Um, we might hear t tornado sirens going off. You never know. Okay, there's this. Let's start tamping down here. I love this color. I, I've had it literally in my box forever. I have, I have a stock box of different variegated leaves and stuff and I, I have never had an idea of what to use it for and when I was looking today this is literally this is when I decided to use it because I'm like oh my god this couldn't be more perfect I love this stuff so much let's use this okay 
Another leaf. Right, at least I know, at least I can see that I'm coming back and forth. I do actually, this is, this is something a little different than we normally have happen, so I can't always see, see that. Hey, Gail and Debbie, thank you for coming in. So you can see, again, I'm very, very purposely letting this be broken. Now, if I want, if I had more of this leaf and I wanted this to be flawless, what I'd be doing is applying two sheets at once. I'd put one down and then put the other on top of it because as this breaks, the second one would go down into the breaks and fill the gaps. But I'm not doing that because I know I have a limit on this. And so I'm using it in a very broken manner to accent all the details. Now I'm going to probably have a little skewings happening here in a minute. Skew, if you, for those who don't know, the word skewings means all this stuff that you see that comes off after I push it down, all the little bits and pieces that come loose. Okay, let's get one more. Oh good, I have a torn up piece here. I have a couple torn up bits and pieces. That's perfect. I don't need two right there. I need, let's take that one and put it down here. And we'll take this littler one and put it up here. Take that, I probably have more stuck on the back side than I actually do on the front just because of the way things folded through. Let's get a little more, let's get a little more in here since I've got these little shreddy pieces to use. I'll turn it so you all can see it. I'm going to take another little torn piece here. there. And then we're going to lay the composition gold on after this. And I'll show you how that's going to look. Okay, I'm not brushing any of the pink off because what's going to happen is I'm going to lay now regular composition gold, which is made out of brass and copper and other metals. Depends on the combination, where you get the metal, color of the metal. I have a lot of this. So if I run out of this right now, I have tons more in my leaf box. All right, so we're going to take that, and now we're going to go in and fill in spots. And you see now I'm polishing it with the skewings brush. And wherever there's an open space, the gold sticks. And fills in those gaps. I need a little chunk in different spots in here. So I know some of this is going to come off. And we'll put some of that in here in that bird's wing crease. And I may tear off little bits and patch it in. But 
now you can get how pretty this is. So it's not just a one note thing. Okay, let's get, there's a lid of glue stuff right in here. I wanna get some in here. And I'm gonna get some down in there. So I'm getting in with my fingers first, cause yeah, you can do that. Right now I'm paying the most attention to the bird because that's going to give the highest impact when you all see it. I'll take a little bit and kind of shove it in here between the bird's legs because there's some exposed area in here. just started pouring rain out we could lose power or signal if it gets really windy going i don't know if you can hear that but yeah it's just started to pour of course i probably should have brought in my sign it might blow down the street i hope not I'm going to hold this this way so that you can get a little better view. Let's see if I can zoom in. That's as zoomed in as it gets. But look how beautiful that is. Now, and I'm, I'm looking at it on my screen, and the colors aren't even close to doing this justice. This is so rich. The pinks are very vibrant. The gold is very yellow. That green in there is so, so pretty. So we're going to work on this just a little more and then um, I think we'll probably call it a day because I know um, I have a lot more gilding to do and I'm going to kind of stick around here with the crappy weather. I'm going to work on my client's piece. I'm going to work on this piece. Wow. And then by the time, you know, give me, a, give me another 45 minutes and I'll be working on the other piece that size will have set up enough for me to happily work on it because we're not there yet especially with this humidity when, when you're working with storm just because something says you can work with it in 15 to 20 minutes be aware of your own weather and temperature situation um, I guarantee you that just because it says I can use this in 20 minutes, we've got a storm here. I'm not even going to try for 20 minutes. I want to give it a good hour. Why? Because there's a lot of moisture in the air. Things won't set up. And if it doesn't set up well, it's going to be gummy. And I'm not going to get as messy. Now, right there, I missed a little gold leaf size. So that rolled right back off. That means I need to put a little size on there. No big deal. I'll do the rest of this and then I'll find the missing spots. I will touch it up nice and tightly with a very thin layer of the size and we'll apply more gold on there. I want to like to get as much of this gilded while we're on camera so you can see how cool it looks. I wish the colors were reading as well. I mean, just, I really, really do. I want to turn it this way so you all see it, the, the sculptural parts better. And let's get some more gold.
I'd rather have it put on too thin and maybe I need to go back and touch up a spot or two than have it too thick and go gummy on me and give me a really bad result. Actually, take because that's so deep there. I'm going to take a couple of little pieces of scrap and set them on top of each other, and then you'll understand what I'm saying by double leafing because that's literally what I'm doing here. So, actually, I'm triple because I just put a third piece on top. But you can see I'm pushing it all into the crevices, and so where one piece breaks, the next piece goes in and fills in what was missed by the broken piece. Now, I have many, many friends who are truly professional gilders, and um, my techniques don't always work for them. I've learned a lot from them, and then I take what I learn and fit it into what I need. But I'm not going to be the person, you know, I... I I understand the process, I understand the principles, um, but I'm not the person, I am not a gesso and bowl person. I don't, I, I need to be able to work faster than that. I do want to learn the technique. By the way, we will be sponsoring um, products at the Society of Gilders for their goodie bags. So we will be there in Asheville, North Carolina um, in September. Anybody who is seriously interested in gilding, I cannot recommend becoming a member and attending a convention highly enough. It is a small group. They have very, really amazing and intense classes with really, really fine guilders, people who really know their stuff. Um, I had been a member of it for years before I actually attended a convention. And I can't tell you, it was eye-opening to attend a convention to see people who had even more passion about doing this stuff and learning the right techniques and the good quality materials and understanding why things were done certain ways. Um, I'm still dying to take manuscript gilding. I'm waiting for somebody to offer that again. I was trying to take it once, but I might have been the only person in the class. Um, I thought it was a fascinating thing. And, you know, given my love of fiddly work, a perfect fit for me. You can see I'm taking little bits and pieces, going in and patching stuff because I don't like to waste. And let's take this piece. I know there's no size right there. I keep trying to put size on it and fix it. I <laughs> put, put leaf on there like there's size still on it. Okay, let's get that there. Put in there. So I'm finding a couple spots that I missed a little size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish gilding both sides, use every little bit of scrap that I have floating around, getting it all done, and then I will touch up with, um, I will then polish it off. I will take a dust, I will take my brush, I will remove all my skewings, I will do all of that stuff. And then I will come back and touch up the size because I don't want the skewings on here. You don't want that while you're doing this. Um, it's a, a bad way to get um, moisture on leaf and have it wadded up on your surface in a way that's un very, very unattractive. Sort of like a little pill of it and you can't smooth it out. So you want to do the repairs well after you've done this. Now, um, I know people who can burnish things with just a skewings brush. That's not me. After I do the skewings brush, I come back with a very, very, very soft piece of um, t-shirt material and burnish it that way as well. So I've gotten all my skewings off and I've gotten everything laid down nice and smooth and removed anything that wasn't sticky. Oops. Let's get this up in 
here. And this is, this is so pretty. And I appreciate everybody who's sticking around, dealing with our uh, weather technical guilt difficulties. I know other people come online at this hour as well. So there's uh, competition for attention. Let's take another piece here. Let's go up in here. And then I'm going to double this back over and tamp it in. Get it all in there. Now, I have turned off my settings, but unfortunately, I put do airplane mode, do not disturb, all of that, but my son still gets through, so hopefully his text messages will not um, break our concentration here. Okay, I need a little foiled, I mean a little gold leaf size in here. Uh, even though I put it in, I probably brushed it back so thin that it's not uh, viable for using. Um, and all these weird colored leaves that you see me using, the pink one, I got it at Sep Leaf in New York. I don't even know if they still make it. Like I said, I've had stuff, some of this stuff I've had forever. I cannot guarantee the colors of the leaves that I'm using other than the gold is still available. Um, a lot of it is, so I would check out gildedplanet.com for um, the uh, leaf. Um, and then come back to us for the Roberson size, which is just so beautiful. I cannot repeating myself, I know, but I cannot tell you how nicely this has laid out, how smoothly this has gone on, how gorgeous this is letting the leaf lay out. Let's see. I'm going to have to turn this around so I can see the other side because I cannot see what I'm missing at the moment. this this way take a look and again just so gorgeous yep there's quite a big spot right there got no leaf on it Bird's tail down here. Let's get a leaf in there. Another little leaf in there. When the spots start getting this small, I'm not sure if I'm seeing a funny reflection or if I'm seeing exposed paint. So that's kind of why you might see me sticking my fingers in there. I have to make sure I'm, I know what I'm looking at. There's just a couple spots that need a little bit of fresh size on them. A little gold right there. I don't know why I'm tearing the piece. There's a piece right there. Now this is what we're doing. We're going in with the skewings brush. extraneous bits. And this, because now there's been so much loose little bits and pieces sort of floating around, 
This will also help me see if I've missed a spot that might still actually have some gold leaf size. Yeah, see there's a little piece right there. Let me see if I've got a piece big enough to go in there. And I do. And then we're just removing all the skewings, which is literally all this squirrely stuff that is going around me. Little shiny bits of metal leaf. Oh, I'm gonna need a little adhesive right there. Now, the manufacturers say that this stays sticky forever. I will tell you, I think it stays sticky for just a couple of days to get any good application. Otherwise, you're really gonna need to come back. And as you can see, even I know, I brushed this area like six times with adhesive, with the size, but I brushed it so thin that it dried and then dried up. So. Sometimes you have to do a little extra work. Now. Let's come back in here. All right, I'm gonna go get, uh, I don't happen to have any t-shirt material, so I'm gonna use a piece of cheesecloth. Now here's the thing with using cheesecloth. The material itself is very soft, but because it's so open weave, that weave in itself can create texture. So I'm going to be going gently. Almost done, at least on this side. Let's see. Is that a little piece right there? Is it sticky? Or is that a spot that's cured up? It's actually a spot that has gold on it that I couldn't see because the reflection makes it look a little flat. I didn't need anything there. before you do touch up, you clean up all of this loose stuff down here. You don't want any of this around while you're putting on um, fresh size. It will make a mess. That's why I do all the gilding, the major gilding first and then save the touch up for like the next day. The squeaking, by the way, is my sneakers on the floor. It's because I was sitting with my feet out, and then I shift, and they squeak across the floor. It's a very annoying noise. I'm sorry. Anybody who's sensitive to stuff like that, that's what the squeaking sound is. Okay. Push some of this out of the way. Now. 
if you're working in a nice clean studio, keep all the skewings in a jar. You can use them for other things at filling in stuff. Um, I probably won't keep these skewings because they're a mix of materials and that's not going to be very helpful to me. Let's see, do we still have some bits? No, that's come unstuck. some more skewings. Let's see if this will stick, if this is, let's see what that does. That's close enough. more skewings. I should pull my... Hey Lynn, nice to see you here. I should keep my iPad out of the way um, and my phone because you don't want this stuff going up into the ports. It's pretty big but it, you know, you don't want to have an accidental issue with getting your connections working because you had gold skewings. I'm only this close right now because I need to be able to see my little screen so if you all make a comment I can read it. Normally this is the only thing I'm doing in the studio and it's everything else is pretty far away from it. Again, the cheesecloth I'm going really gently with because it does have enough texture that I don't want it to shred something that's um, really just needing to be tamped down instead of torn up. Now, I will tell you 100% true, truth, this kind of stuff, the cleanup and the skewings, it's way easier with gold because gold is so much softer. It likes to clean up better. Um, so it's a, actually a little harder doing this kind of stuff with composition leaf. Not that I mind. I'm just, I'm just stating the fact that sometimes different metals do this differently. And since composition metal is heavier and thicker and bigger, it tends to tear more than it does sort of melt off. Let's get this right in there. Um, and with real gold, I would not be going in at it with my fingers because it's too delicate. With composition gold, I can stick my fingers in it and kind of move it around, and it's, it actually helps a little sometimes. this little skewing stuff that I can't get out at that angle, so I need to turn it around, clean it up from this side. And the other thing I will say, because we're going to be putting silver here, 
you want to clean all the gold, all the gold skewings up off of your work area before you start putting the size on for the silver. Otherwise, you're going to have little gold speckles in your silver. And unless that's something you want, um, you need to make sure your, your area has been cleaned up. And as you notice, I don't size both, both colored areas at once because I don't want to have to worry about contaminating this area with this color and this color with this color. It makes much more sense to do the two colors separately. So I don't have all my skewings off because I've got to go find a t-shirt, piece of t-shirt material somewhere, even if I have to bring one from home. Look how beautiful this is. Aside from the area that we've missed here, look, just look. This is so gorgeous. I couldn't be, okay, I could be more pleased if I could turn around and not have little funky bits sticking out, but we're gonna get in there. <laughs> this piece may be wanting to go back and forth and back and forth on both sides, but I mean, seriously, Look how beautiful that is. Oh my gosh, I couldn't be more pleased. Okay, everyone, thank you for, let's, let's zoom this around so you can all see my face. All right, everyone, thank you so much for giving me so much of your time today. Don't forget, we are putting the pink hexagon, the black pebbles, and our brand new Wild Fang foil on our website tonight. Next week, we are going to be receiving the Whitson's products and all of those gorgeous snakeskin um, foils. So we've got lots of new stuff coming in. Absolutely keep up on check us. You know, if you're not following us, follow us. If you're not uh, following our, our um, I don't know what I was going to say there, but check out our website for all the newest stuff. Don't hesitate to ask me questions. Uh, sorry, I lost track. I was going to say, if you don't follow us on, on here, follow us on our business page, but we're on our business page. So keep up with us. Keep going. We're doing creative stuff all spring and summer. So Tis the season. Oh, before I forget, last few days, product of the month uh, is Artsyville Texture Medium, 20% uh, off with the code TEXT20. Do not forget that's coming to an end soon. So if you are a texture medium lover like I am, don't miss this opportunity to save 20%. All right, everyone, have a great night. I will talk to you soon.